Our next speaker will share her very own perspective on decision making. Maike Winnemuth is a highly regarded journalist with a real talent for unusual stories and self-experiments. She has been living on unemployment benefits for a month. You have been wearing the same dress for a year, but I believe you had like five of the same. Three, three, okay. Um, and you've been gotten ready for the New York Marathon in only three months. But your last experiment was, uh, took a little more courage. You won half a million euro at uh, the German version of who wants to be a millionaire and decided to make a big change in your life. You decided to leave the life you've been living and to go and live around the world in two, 12 different cities in 12 months. And you started blogging about it and you started writing a book that became an instant bestseller and the book is called Das Große Los. And she's going to share her story and her most important insight of that time is one actually doesn't need a lot of money to do what I did. Welcome on stage, Maike Winnemuth. Welcome. Hello. Good evening. No, good evening. No. Good morning, in fact. Oh my god, I'm not awake yet. Um, thanks very much, Maria, for this uh, introduction. I hope I get this thing to work. Um, you know, I try to talk about the thing, things I learned by winning, as you just heard, a hell of a lot of money and getting lost for one year. Um, I learned a lot of things. Uh, first of all, it was to take risk to make it all happen. This is me um, just having won 500,000 euro on who wants to be a millionaire. One lucky bitch, right? Um, <laughs> And yet there were very many people, especially some colleagues, who afterwards asked me if I hadn't been afraid to embarrass myself by, for instance, blundering at a really easy question. The horror, right? Um, you know what? I'd rather have the reputation to, um, taking risk, to take risk and occasionally fall flat on my face than a reputation of not trying at all. And the obsession with saving face at all costs means that you have a safe, uh, pretty safe, middle-of-the-road kind of life. But that's very fine. But what about the joys and surprises and adventures you all miss? So I decided to just go, not plan at all. That was one major decision. Actually, the one decision I really made was uh, to be courageous, and the rest just fell into place, it felt. I wanted to spend this money on a year of total freedom. Uh, the idea was to do whatever the hell I wanted for one whole year. And for, for me, this involves traveling. So uh, I decided to, to spend uh, this year in 12 different cities. And the decision for the cities was pure gut. I jotted them down on a little yellow post-it note on my way back home from the show. And I walked into a, uh, I want, I walked into a, um, uh, into a travel agency. I said I wanted to go there. I just want to go there. I imagined those cities to be like test tubes. I wanted to immerse myself in with very uncertain reactions. Would I explode? Would I turn blue? Would I evaporate? I thought of this year as a series of experiments um, with very uncertain outcome. Um, I didn't expect each and every one, each and every city to be a success. But then again, what is a successful experiment anyway? One which tells you what you already knew or suspected, or one which surprises you? I tend to adopt the stance of a scientist when it comes to this. Um, no experiment ever is a failure. Just another insight on uh, the way to the final result, if there is such a thing. So I didn't have much time before taking off, so I just took off. I thought I was right about this, that I could make my decisions on the road. The path would unfurl by walking it, I thought. So I rented apartments for the first two months. This is one of them. This is my apartment, beautiful apartment in uh, Buenos Aires, uh, via Airbnb and sabbaticalhomes.com, uh, another uh, platform where you can rent apartments. And that was that. I didn't want to uh, plan everything ahead. I just didn't want to follow a to-do list, as I do at home. I just wanted to get lost and go with the flow and for once in my life not know in the morning what I would do in the evening. Oh, that's, um, 
that was supposed to be the slide before, so I can see the, my trip, starting in Hamburg, um, Sydney, Buenos Aires, Mumbai, Shanghai, Honolulu, San Francisco, London, Copenhagen, Barcelona. Then it was Tel Aviv, Addis Abeba, Havana, and then I took a container ship back home. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Hamburg girl, I need to come home on a ship, I, I thought. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, this all sounds very great in theory, doesn't it? But what do you actually do when you can do everything? When I arrived in Sydney, my first destination, I felt utterly lost at what to do. I felt like a zoo animal um, that is reintroduced into the wild and just doesn't know what to do, how to walk into the savannah out of its cage. I, total freedom can be a daunting, actually. Uh, we're just not used to it anymore. In fact, we probably lost it when we first got handed our very first timetable on our first day in school, and afterwards we get and a timetable after timetable, it always seems to be someone telling us what to do, when to do it, and how fast to do it, preferably very fast, thank you very much. So when I saw this signpost at uh, the entrance of the Sydney Botanical Garden, it really felt like a sign from above, you know, please walk on the grass. <laughs> Incredible, you, you know you're not in Germany anymore. <laughs> so. And it also says, I don't know if you can read it, uh, we would also in, like to invite you to smell the roses, hug the trees, talk to the birds, and picnic on the lawn. I mean, hello. This is, uh, this is uh, Australia all over. It's, it's uh, one heartfelt invitation to just live and just enjoy life. I, I loved it immediately. And I knew then and there that this was going to be a year of permissions. Uh, and that I could not wait for signposts such as this one uh, to get permission, but I had to give it to myself. Um, when I was on my, uh, my way to my last city, which was Havana, I happened to sit next to a psychotherapist on the plane, and I told her my story, and she said, you know what, the most important thing you did was to give yourself permission to go on this journey. And I thought that was very wise, that uh, really was uh, true. You have to give yourself permission, nobody else will. They just want you to fit in, to be a responsible citizen, and to behave. They don't care if you enjoy it or not. So you have to take care of that, have to take care of that yourself. Um, insight number four, go alone. Especially if you're a woman. Weren't you ever afraid, I get asked quite often. No, <laughs> no need to be afraid. Contrary to conventional wisdom, uh, the world is a very friendly place. As a woman, you get kind of preferential treatment even. People are protective of you, I've found. They open their doors much more willingly than they would to men. Um, another question I get asked, didn't you ever feel alone by going alone? And I have to say, I never felt less alone than during this year. If you want to meet someone, it's amazingly easy. Do something that sounds like fun, and you will meet people that you will like. For instance, I took part in a uh, thing called You Can Ukulele um, <laughs> during the Sydney Festival. So everybody was supposed to uh, go there, play the ukulele, especially if you've never done that before. Uh, there was a YouTube video which taught you how to play the ukulele, especially waltzing Matilda. So, and we were supposed to meet at uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a sunny Saturday uh, afternoon to um, play a waltzing Matilda together. It was great fun, and as you can see, I, made, I met great people doing it. Another thing I did was, that was in Buenos Aires, I went to a Puerta Serrada, which is a private dinner party in a private uh, apartment, uh, normal people like just you, you and me and set up a dinner party and you go there and sit next to uh, another, uh, 11, uh, another 11 total strangers just as curious as you are. I sat next to an actress from Lithuania called Ruta and it took us all of one minute to find out that we have a mutual friend in Hamburg. So uh, it, the world turns into a very small place when it comes uh, to that. She gave me the contact details for a Bollywood actress, my next destination, M Mumbai, and uh, talk to people and the world turns into a village, I found. You know this theory of six degrees of separation which uh, connects you to every person in the world? I think it's utter bullocks, it's, it's two. It's not more than two degrees, actually. 
Number five, play. If you want to have some fun, uh, turn yourself into a pinball, which is what I did. I involved the readers of the Süddeutsche Zeitung magazine, which is the color supplement of Germany's biggest uh, um, daily paper, in a little game. I, they could send me an email and ask me to do stuff for them. Um, buy me a pair of men's tango shoes in white patent leather size 10, please, in Buenos Aires, which I did. <laughs> this is it. Or uh, send my friend uh, Verena a, a birthday message. So I involved some people in Buenos Aires to send Verena uh, this little birthday message. Uh, Feliz cumpleaños, Verena. I asked people to hold this sign up to them and send this home to them. Or for instance, uh, buy this great guy in Honolulu a German beer, and I did. <laughs> a secretary from Munich asked me very touchingly to light a candle in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in uh, Jerusalem for her recently deceased boss, which I obviously did also. So there were very different kinds of, of, um, of questions, and uh, yeah, here we go. Never did this before. It shows, doesn't it? Uh, so, um, I really liked, um, liked this kind of involvement. Granted, not everyone is a journalist like I am and can do stuff like that, but um, you can still open yourself up to uh, adventures off the beaten track by just asking a stranger, for instance, for their favorite place and then go there directly without hesitation. I still sometimes do that in my hometown, Hamburg. I live right next to the main train station there, and uh, sometimes I just walk over and say, sorry, I'm a stranger here. Could you recommend your favorite pub or cafe or, or bar? And then I just go there. And I spend you know, really great evenings in biker bars with Harley Davidson dudes and stuff, which I never would have gone <laughs> to anyway. So you don't really have to travel the world. Uh, it's just a question of curiosity, actually, and a sense of adventure. And this, uh, this conference uh, asks you to um, explore new ground. Um, sometimes it's, or break new ground, sometimes it, you need to break familiar ground, I think, by just looking at it differently. I think uh, courage and curiosities, curiosity are, are like muscles. You need to train them, you need to exercise them every once in a while. You can do this by little, little things like that. Um, okay, let's see, on number six, ask. Again, ask, ask people, uh, ask them, for the recommendation uh, to do something for you. You won't always get what you want, as we just heard, but if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So go and ask, really, and you can trust in the comfort of strangers. That's what I have found. Share, another th thing that was really important. I decided to write a travel blog about this experience, and that was obviously one of the smartest things I did that here. I didn't even want to be smart. I just wanted to settle my karma bill, you know? Because I leave, believe that if uh, you have, you're supposed to pay back something when you have such an, an unreasonable amount of luck as I had. Um, but then it started to flow in the opposite direction. The blog commentators helped me along. They, uh, they made useful suggestions, hooked me up with friends in the cities and comforted me when I fell down, which I did every once in a while. So sometimes I felt a little like the, the little Tamagotchi. They looked after me to keep me alive, in a way. <laughs> and this digital companionship w was invaluable to me. It was, uh, as was the amount of information you can get on the net and on the go. I couldn't have done this year without the internet. Uh, as I said, uh, again, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. As I said, I, I um, found my apartments via uh, sabbatical uh, homes.com or Airbnb as I did my apartment in San Francisco. And I met this great guy who you are going to meet in a couple of minutes, Carl Gerassi. He was my landlord in San Francisco and also in London. He offered his apartment on this platform, sabbatical.homes. I uh, thought, oh, this is a great apartment. I think I like it. and, and I. I, I wrote the uh, landlord and it turned out to be Carl Gerassi. Amazing. So, yeah, that's how I met him. <laughs> um, let things happen to you. This is probably one of the hardest lessons to learn of them all. We all tend to plan ahead to be economic with our time. We want a measurable result, preferably very fast. Thank you very much. 
and to th we tend to think from the end. To just let go and let things and ideas unfurl and just happen to you was one of the most um, valuable lessons I learned. This is one of the places I learned them. <laughs> this is in the Dead Sea, me reading a book. Everybody has to do that once in their lifetime, I find. Um, number nine, be an absolute beginner again and again. I was an absolute beginner in each and one of my, my cities. I had to start fresh and new. Uh, on uh, the first of each month. But um, I did a couple of other things. Uh, people asked me, are oh, you used this year to reinvent yourself? I said, ah, oh, blah, no. That's, don't, don't ever reinvent yourself. That's so strenuous. Got another thing on our to-do list. Reinvent yourself. No, please, no. <laughs> Just allow yourself some period of playtime. This is my recommendation. Um, allow yourself to be bored every once in a while. Allow yourself to be curious for things that never interested you before. And allow yourself to be an absolute beginner again. I, for instance, learned how to butcher in Sydney. I really did. How to stand up paddle, how to do Tai Chi, how to play the ukulele, how to do needlework in London. Uh, very, very refined. How to scuba dive in the uh, Red Sea and how not to tango. <laughs> this is definitely not for me, I find. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny too, and then I stopped doing it. <laughs> so number 10 and the most important recommendation I have for you, find out what you really, really, really want, not what you are supposed to want. Uh, maybe you do want a house in uh, the suburbs and a carport with two cars in it and a 55-inch flat screen TV, but maybe you don't, right? Travel is a great way to find out what makes you tick. It's uh, taking stock of your beliefs. It's a lesson in reviving your instincts. In my case, uh, I decided pretty early on that I wanted to continue to work as a journalist. I love to write. But the thing is, once it was voluntary, once I did it because I wanted it, it was a totally different ballpark. Uh, all of a sudden, it was a labor of love. It was a, not a chore anymore. It was a total joy to work. Uh, and it, felt, it was so much fun, it, it almost felt like leisure. Now comes the really shocking part. I easily and playfully earned enough money to pay for this whole year. So I earned as much as I spent without even trying, meaning I would never even have needed this windfall of winning this quiz show in the first place. It really hit me like a ton of bricks. I could have done it all along. It was always in my hands. It's one, one of the most important lessons ever, I think, in my life. You can change everything, anytime. Your life is not a prison. And if you feel like it is, uh, you got the key. You are your own prison guard. It's your life. You decide what you want to do with it. So my recommendation is don't believe the options they present, present you with. Um, they're not the only ones. For women, it's often children or career, or if you're very courageous, both. But what if your answer is neither? You can still say that. It's your life. So when I came home, I decided that I wanted to continue the lightness of travel. I moved from a 200-square-meter uh, apartment to a 40-square-meter apartment because I wanted the, the lightness. I didn't want to own anything. I continued to wear the same thing I wore during this year of travel, which is, as you can see, blue. <laughs> I still do this every day. This is my, my whole wardrobe now. Um, and I continue to travel. Next year, I will go on my next project, which will be 12 months in 12 German cities, because I found, uh, now I know the world, but I hardly ever know my, my own country. I need to start doing that. And I continue to give myself permission uh, to do all kinds of stuff. I continue to walk on the grass, and I would love to implore you to do the same. Thanks very much. Thank